Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome onto my channel today, and it gives me great joy to observe you are viewing this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Olayinka Akonle. I'm a lecturer in the university. I'm a consultant. On this channel, I do a number of stuffs, but all the stuffs on this I do on this channel, you can easily cluster them into four. So you can view the playlist on this channel. There are four playlists to catch up with what I do on this channel. Meanwhile, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly click subscribe on your screen right now. Tap subscribe on your screen right now to subscribe to this channel. The video you are viewing today is environmental and social impact assessment in intervention project or development project. Meanwhile, there are two videos on this channel that are related to this, so I would sincerely recommend that you view these two previous videos. There is one on social safeguards in intervention or development project. There's another one on environmental safeguards in intervention and development project. These videos will assist a lot to put this in proper perspective for you. They are related with this video that you are viewing right now. So let's dive into it. What is environmental and social impact assessment in development project or intervention project? You know, this ESIA, we call it for short, is very important in project design and implementation. Throughout the project cycle, ESIA that have been designed will assist to properly scope and implement the project. You know, it's very important. And now, ESIA is, can be described as the process of examination, the consequence of the consequences and impact of a particular development project on the social, that is, the relationship existing in that society, the social relations of that society, and the environment, environmental conditions or elements of that society. So what ESIA wants to do is to examine the consequences, the outcomes, the impacts, the implication of the project in question on the social environment of the project community and the environmental conditions of the project community. What we want to do basically is to be sure that this project will, dis will not disrupt, will not destroy, will not endanger the environmental conditions of the environment of the project community and the social condition of the project community. We believe that no project is, wor is worth it if it's going to destroy the social and environmental architecture, homeostasis and balance of the project community. So we want to understand the consequences and the impact of this project on the environment, the community and the people. Another concept is PAP, the project of project affected persons. So how will this project, the project affect the environment and the social conditions of the project affected person? And how can we mitigate this? How can we prevent this? How can we ameliorate, ameliorate these human conditions on the account of the project? We don't want to be selfish and say, well, this project is very important for these people. They have to just endure it. No, we want to be sure that it's mutually benefiting. It's shared prosperity that we believe that both the project implementers, the actors and the stakeholders and the project communities must share in the prosperity that the project will bring to them. We don't want to leave them poorer environmentally and socially than before the project. That's why we do ESIA. Essentially, it's very important at the baseline level to take the baseline conditions of the social environment and the, and the biophysical environment you know, generally speaking, we want to understand the social systems. I want to understand the environmental systems so that before uh, during implementation, we are able to say, okay, this is how far we have done, gone with this, is what has been the impact of this on this community, and how can we mitigate this, avoid this, or ameliorate this. So, ESI want to identify the measures to mitigate the negative consequences and to enhance the positive consequences, because the project ESIA is not only interested in the negative consequences, we also want to be able to, to, to improve or to better institutionalize the positive, or positive measures. And also, key to this is the possibility of alternative approaches in a way that, that we don't have the most minimal or, or no damage to the social, social system and the environment also. So 
this is ESI is very important. In fact, without ESI, most financial institutions internationally will not fund the project and they will not support it. And even after the project is implemented, we still have to do what we call project, social and environmental project audit. You know, we want to also still want to see audit essentially what has gone down through the during the project and what has been done during the project and how is the community faring even after after the other the project. So this is very important for us. So it's very good for project design, project approval and project implementation. So it's very good. So at the, at the initial screening of the project, at the initial scoping of the project, ESIA is very compulsory. And even during project implementation, is very important. So we need to, part of what we have to do, what are the things we have to do during ESIA when we're conducting, we need to first and foremost identify the project stakeholders. We call this stakeholders identification of the project. Who are the stakeholders? The project implementation units, the project communities, the state opinion leaders, the youth groups, even the government, even the international funding institutions, all the stakeholders must be identified because we have to ensure inclusiveness or inclusion, so that they can be proper ownership and the proper, I mean, sustainability of the project eventually. So inclusion is very important. So stakeholders identification is very important, and there will be social economic survey social economic research will be available so that we are able to understand, go to have the overview of the socioeconomic architecture composition of that environment to know how to best implement the project that will do minimum or no damage to the socioeconomic structure of that environment. Then there will be stakeholders engagement. Once we identify the stakeholders, then we'll engage them to enable them buy into the project because they are key actors to allow the project either to be implemented or not and to be sustainable or not. Because the PIU, Project Implementation Unit, will go after the project. The international financial institutions will go after the project. All the consultants and experts will go after the project. So the communities are the ones that will continue to use the project and protect the project. So they have to be carried along from the beginning. And that's why stakeholders engagement is very important. So we then do power and influence matrix on the project so we know who is powerful what are the level of power and what is the nature of power this is very important we have to ident identify the paths the project affected persons we call them paths those that will be directly affected by the project and how do we want to manage their situations that they are not worse off so there are researches there are samples to be taken you know collect we collect a lot of samples environmental and social samples for data for baseline data so collection of environmental and social baseline data, very important. And this is actually a key reason for, for the ESI because you cannot assess in, um, or evaluate the social and environmental impact of the project without the baseline data. It's the baseline data that will be compared with inline data to be able to empirically, scientifically, come to the conclusion that this is what the impact of this project has been and this will assist us to them do what we call livelihood restoration or researchment action plan and the rest of them. I will do another video on our research action plan after this, so stay tuned. So, so what are part of the data that we're going to collect or to gather for this to be able to do this e environmental and social impact assessment very well? We'll go after, you know, you do socioeconomic survey, all these ones I've mentioned, then you order to do collect soil samples, what's the nature of the soil of the environment, and what we look also at water quality. We take the water samples, the water shed and the catchment, surface water, underground water, you know, to be able to want, to be able to get it. We look also at the air quality. We have equipment we use for this, all this I'm mentioning. Specialized equipment, you have to get the water, you know, the air quality, the hydrology of the environment. You have to take the climate, you have to take the vegetation, take the sample of the climate, the vegetation of the environment, the flora and the fauna, what are their natures of, of all of this, the topography of the place, you have to understand, so the noise level, to be able to know the noise pollution, dust, you have to know, understand the nature of the dust of the place, to what extent would there be noise pollution on the, on the account of the project, to what extent would there be dust pollution on the account of the project. You know, the atmosphere, you know, the, the air pollution, to what extent we are we going to be able to control it based on the baseline we have collected during the project and after. The, you know, the, the biophysical environment must be properly understood to know how to handle it. You know, the temperature, 
the humidity, very important. The wind condition, the wind speed and the wind direction is very important. Then the livelihood, very important, the livelihood of the place. What are the livelihood crops? Are they farmers? Are they petty traders? Are they big companies, environment, is it an industrial estate? So the livelihood of the poor poor, what do they depend on so that we don't disrupt it? Then the social organization, social architecture, the political system, institutional arrangement of the environment, the political system, religious system, the family system, economic system. You know, look at it. You know, even the, the economy, economic system, economic institution, the family institution, the educational institution, religious institution, political institutions, the social organization of the place. How is it? And how are we going to manage it? How are we going to protect it? To be sure that it is not disrupted. Then you know the geomorphology of the place. So all these are components of show, uh, I mean, environmental and social impact assessment. And all of this will have to come through also in the table of content of the ESIA report. And this is very important. So if by the time you're able to go and understand all of this, I'm sure the ESIA must have been very perfect. Till I see you in my next video, kindly subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and share as widely as possible. Bye for now.